Hello everybody, and just here, and welcome back to Yofukashi no Uta, Call of the Night. In uh, the previous episode, we were introduced to the whole concept, to the whole thing, the whole idea uh, of the show. Our main character, Kokonotsu, <coughs> excuse me, Ko, is an insomniac. Um, I would like to call him a hikikomori, but he's not exactly. Uh, sure, he no longer go. He's no longer going to school. He shuts himself in his room during the day, but at night he ventures out into the brightly lit streets of whatever city he lives in, and uh, just walks the streets. And one day he encounters a vampire, whose name eludes me, and she will slowly but surely introduce him to the beauty of the night. Uh, she already kinda did, she uh, told him to release his inhibitions and high-five a stranger, and uh, he's liking it, he's liking it, and he also found a goal in his life, something he never had, something he never considered, now his goal is becoming a vampire, and uh, to that end he has to fall in love with another vampire and then have that vampire suck his blood. Problem is, he doesn't know what love is. He never understood love, he never understood dating, he never understood liking or not liking someone. So, for someone like him, falling in love will certainly prove to be difficult. Although, maybe not. Who knows? Who's to say? Perhaps by episode 6 he's already gonna be a vampire, and from then on it's gonna turn into a battle shonen of having to fight other vampires. I don't know. I genuinely don't. I don't think it's gonna go in that direction. Uh, I think it's gonna go for more... Uh mellow pacing, more mellow stories, kind of a comforting thing. Uh, right now it's um, sunset outside uh, where I am. There is uh, rain falling from the sky. I have an open window to let in the night air into the room. And uh, this show very much feels like that. It very much has the same vibe. Maybe I'm having a case of synesthesia, <laughs> but it's definitely having the same vibe. Um, and also, of course, let's not forget the art. Uh, the art of Yofukashi no Uta is just amazing. Same goes for music, same goes for everything, really, about this show is just, just great. So far, it's only been one episode, so we can't exactly judge the entire season based on that alone. But I don't think they're gonna drop the ball. I really don't think they're gonna. Uh, what's gonna happen in today's episode? Probably shenanigans at night. Probably some more neon colors. Probably Cole trying to figure out what love is. Or maybe he's gonna come back to school. Maybe we're gonna get some school shenanigans. Maybe the vampire is gonna be a transfer student. Uh, yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> but we don't know. Anything can happen, really. Anything can happen at night. It's an unrestrained, unconstrained time where you can escape from the realities and create your own. So uh, let's see where that reality will bring us, shall we? Gonna give you your subs. Why is the timer going already? I don't know, but it no longer is. I'm gonna give you your subs. No, cable, stay, stay in place myself my sound because the sound of this uh, anime is worth hearing and uh, i'm gonna mention support if you want to support me and my nightly escapades you can do that on patreon you can do that on throne links in the description or if you don't want to spend any money at all you can just share my videos around because the word of mouth really matters a lot for the growth of a channel and with all of that out of the way we can finally start watching Episode 2 of Yofukashi no Uta, version by subs, please, as usual, in 3, 2, 1, go.
the galaxy in the sky. I love those shots. Also, I love that they really look like just photos with a filter on them. Going out again. Wait, is it episode 2? It is. And yet again, I love the use of color. The best possible combo! <laughs> because she's embarrassed to say it any other way. Stamina and a pistol, yeah, sure. Using botanical terms, why not? <laughs> yeah. To fall in love. That's enough. Yeah, she really gets easily embarrassed. Was she? Okay. <laughs> what? Showing the neck? <laughs> Drink my blood! Kira! <laughs> yeah, there needs to be a proper atmosphere. As she said, it's eating but also copulating. Awesome. I love the detail of the uh, pinprick scars on his neck still being visible. The shaft poses. <laughs> the banger opening. Not gonna lie, out of all the shows I'm watching this time around, including Symphogear, yes, this is probably the best opening. I'm... I'm gonna be listening to it, even outside of this anime, genuinely. I need to find it on Tidal. Don't have Spotify. Or maybe YouTube Music. So many characters we haven't been introduced to yet. I genuinely love this opening. The last time I felt so strongly about an opening was the opening of Princess Principle. Call of the Night. No neon lights. Yep. 
Yeah. Night lights. Oh, it's those three again. Yeah, City at Night can genuinely look pretty. Uh, there's a cool place. Not exactly near me, but... Uh, I posted about it a couple of times on the Discord. Uh, it's an old train station turned into a place. I think I mentioned it during the first episode. You can get some food, some beer, some coffee, and it is an outer area on the tracks with recliner chairs and uh, neon purple lights. And it looks great at night. Cheater! <laughs> Yeah! But isn't it also copulation? Yeah! Exactly! <laughs> it does! <laughs> Do you have a phone? She probably doesn't. <laughs> ah, this fucking gremlin. <laughs> She sends bats with messages. Does she have a phone after all? Yeah. I remember my father having a similar one ages ago. <laughs> mm, depends. This fucking gremlin. <laughs> Because it's time to sleep. Get in. And we're entering the the zone again. For a little bit of bloom on top of everything, a little bit of a filter. Are you sure? And take off your fucking socks. <laughs> and the overly rendered lips again. Ah. Little bit jelly, aren't we? Of 
full name. Serious matter. Okay. Yeah, she does get easily embarrassed. They are really meant for each other, aren't they? <laughs> this little scene of lowering the sleeve. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Okay, maybe he's gonna actually become a vampire by the time episode 3 hits. <laughs> if, they, if it continues this way. Okay, what's the beat? What's the music? Looking for her again. She's going to find you. It's not how it works, Cole. Yup. Just set up a meeting spot. A Benton watch. The what now? Are you gonna morph now? Y yeah. Okay, so it's like a walkie-talkie, but in the form of a watch. <laughs> Not anymore! <laughs> right. Yeah. That's actually a cool plan. Not gonna lie. And it was stolen or destroyed? Just stolen. Or in the trash? Or is he just not gonna call? Of course. <laughs> it is. It is bleak. She gets embarrassed by the weirdest things, and then just... Okay. Yes, we shall. 
shots of the city. Beautiful as always. You have a transceiver now. <clears throat> mm. Sure. Being alone in a crowd is worse than being alone alone. Not bad. <laughs> Do you even know if they work? Are they even paired? Okay, so they can communicate. <laughs> Top of the evening to you, lad. Okay, they're playing now. <laughs> Dozo. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love her reactions. I mean, depends on uh, what the tastiness of blood depends on, I guess. Wait, is it the ED? We're only 18 minutes in, there's like at least 4 minutes left of the episode. Or is it not the ED, just a random musical piece? A school? A school indeed. Okay, it was just a cool bit of animation and music. Gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, true. Also, I love her boots. It's like a heel, but fully enclosed. Sucking blood in the open? Damn that exhibitionist vampire! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sucking blood at school? How lewd. Yeah. Probably true. Nazuna-chan! Oh! 
heavy cannons already. And she's beat red. <laughs> That's Nachan. Well, he has one now. Nazu Nachan. Oh, you're gonna call it? Oh, he bought a new pair. And he just has the old one on his wrist. Is the old one calling? Okay. Oh. A new character. Okay. Ooh. Okay. That's some amazing art. They're really taking the play with colors to... Jesus, the colors! <laughs> the music is great, we knew that already, but we haven't seen the actual animation for the ED. And, what do you know, the actual animation is also great. What a shot! And again, the splash of vibrant color. <laughs> okay, yeah, this ending is also Complete and utter madness, and I love it. I love both the opening and the ending. That's never happened. That's never happened. And I'm having a hard time picking which I love more. Episode 2 did not disappoint. Holy shit, episode 2 did not disappoint. And even if it did, the ending would have made it up entirely. Yeah, that was just amazing. That's gonna be the highlight of my week, isn't it? This show's gonna be the highlight of my week, genuinely. And that's it. That's it! So, how about... Now... We go through it again. Shall we? Ah, uh, yeah, that was great. The colors, again, playing a very important role. The arts changes according to the mood and changes according to mostly according to the mood right sometimes it's fairly like normal like in this shot and then you have like overly detailed super well shaded shots of him here with varying with uh, like varied thickness line work and all and there was that one particular shot of uh, of nazana that was even more rendered, and I love it. I love the art here, I love the colors, I mentioned it all already. Uh, Nazuna is a very interesting character. She's throwing loot jokes left and right, like stamina and the pistol and haha <laughs> foreplay and whatnot, but as soon as you mention anything about the romance, anything about being girlfriend and holding hands and calling uh, each other with the Chan suffix, right? As soon as you mention any of that, she immediately turns beet red. I love it. I love it. And Ko is the opposite. He has no trouble talking about love and romance because... 
he doesn't really understand those from what he's telling us, but he gets embarrassed out the lewd things because he's only 14, right? I like it. I like it. I really do like their dynamic. Yeah, we're re-establishing what we've heard in the previous episode. <laughs> that he wants to become a vampire, and to do that he needs to fall in love. Apparently Neck is very lewd. And like, yeah, you can't look... You can't look all drink my blood now, heart, like that. Makes sense. And you gotta think about timing, indeed, because it's both a... Uh, c both... Food and, uh, what's the word she was using? Copulation. Yeah, both food and copulation. And I have to fall in love with her. Opening, amazing, as always. Completely crazy, completely mad. And same goes for ending, although ending is even more mad. And I love it. I love every second of it. Yeah, the city looks beautiful at night. Somehow things look kind of pretty. They do indeed. They do indeed. In general, during night time, everything looks different. And everything does look pretty because the shadows are much more pronounced. Because there is only so much light out there. Right? The silhouettes, the shadows, everything is much more visible. And uh, I think that's the main thing that's so enticing about night and night cityscape and night like village scape. Uh, I lived both in the city. I lived both in a not quite a village, but a small little town on the edge of a forest. And both of those places look very different at night. Right? Uh, in the countryside you can see the stars, you can sometimes even see a little bit of the Milky Way, if the light pollution is particularly, uh, particularly weak. And it's a whole another experience, there aren't any street lights, there's just the moon and the stars that are guiding you. It's kind of creepy, it's kind of scary, but also gets your blood pumping. And uh, the city at night is a whole different beast. It's not as scary, it's not as creepy, and uh, instead it's free of any inhibitions. The only people who are up at night are the people who are somehow not, com not conforming to the usual circadian rhythm, right? Only people who stay at night willingly. Maybe they are. Maybe they're going drinking. Maybe they're going to watch a movie. Maybe they run from home. I don't know. You know, things like that. But if you have work tomorrow, you don't stay up late, and that's cool about night. It's free of any inhibitions, and of course, the lights, the neon lights, the city lamps, everything creates this colorful, vibrant cityscape. Uh, it's a pity that in cities, in reality, you can't see a starry sky. Because the light pollution is just way too much. Way too much to... I, I count myself lucky if I can spot, like, one or two stars at night. It has to be a really clear and a really dark night with, like, a new moon... And maybe I'm gonna be able to spot, like, Venus or the Morning Star or something like that. Back on back in the countryside, I could see entire constellations. In the city, I can't. And that's a pity. That's a pity. And it gets me kind of... I don't know. I don't know. Listless, I guess. Maybe. Maybe is the proper word for it. I kind of long for that countryside life. But I also kind of don't. Because, sure, life in the countryside was cool, and you could see the stars, and you could see cicadas at night, hear cicadas at night, and you could see the bats flying around, and, uh, and it was cool, it was great. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, having, to go, having to do some shopping, having to buy something bigger, means a trip 
to the city by train. And right now I genuinely can just go out in my flip-flops, go to the store, because it's straight... I, I can see like a big supermarket, little to be more precise, out of my window. I can go there as I am right now, buy some stuff, a whole basket full of it, drive the basket to my home, carry it up with the elevator, unload it in my kitchen, and then go back with the basket to the store. It's this easy. I don't even need to pack any bags or anything. I can just cart it all here. It's not... It's... Life in the city is convenient. But it's not as close to nature. It's not as pretty. Although I count, my, I count myself lucky that I'm living in a... Like a communist era block of flats and not uh, not the modern block of flats because say what you will about those times but when they were building some uh, blocks of flats they really took care of urban planning there's plenty of green spaces around there's like a mini park inside of a circle of blocks there is schools there is stores there's everything in reach and uh, when i sometimes go to like the outskirts of a city uh, where uh, the developers are building up swath swaths of land and are just building blocks of flats, there's absolutely nothing. Just concrete roads, maybe a bush or maybe a bush or two, and that's it. N not a store, not a school. Maybe if you're lucky, there's a daycare, but nothing else. There's no parks. There's no greenery. There's no playgrounds. Nothing of the sort, and I pity the people who have to buy like those new flats. But on the other hand, I don't, because uh, one of the weak parts of living in an old apartment like mine is, is uh, the roof is leaking sometimes, for example, right? Uh, there is no great ventilation. The entirety of ventilation at my home, at my apartment, is entirely passive. There's no fan at the roof or anything. If the wind blows well, you get some ventilation. If the wind doesn't blow well, stew in this stale air. Uh, the electric installation is all al is uh, all aluminum. I can't, like, even if I wanted, even if I could buy a 3D printer, even if I had space for it, I can't realistic realistically plug it in because it's just going to burn the fucking wires. <laughs> So, it's all give and take, but I went on uh, too much of a rant here. Let's continue with Yopkashi no Uta. Yeah, I really went on a rant here, didn't I? <laughs> uh, I don't absolutely have to see her every night, but she does want to see you every night. And yeah, of course, she wants to be seen as that, oh, devil may care, I was, I've been looking for someone else, it's just food to me, I don't care about you in particular. But we know that deep inside, she has a very much a soft spot for Ko. And I'm not talking about her bed, I'm talking about the soft spot in her heart. Uh... We copulate with anyone. Yes, that's right. Do you do line? No, she does neither, but she just wanted to use the line. Aha, <laughs> get it? She wanted to use the line about using the line, huh? Let's go back to my place. Some great view for a call. And here's the old brick of a phone. In no time at all, they came out with smaller ones, and I couldn't even bother with anyone. I get the feeling. I know the feeling. You you buy yourself something, something you think is cool, and then, like, next month, something better comes out. Fucking hate it. <laughs> Buyer's remorse. I could have waited, I could have waited, I could have waited, but on the other hand, you just wait, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and you never buy the actual thing you wanted. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, for sure. Yeah, we're entering the zone with the colors, with the filters, with the bloom. No, you can't suck my blood, because I'm jealous. You said you could find one, but 
she eventually learns to be honest. I like it. Both characters have a room for growth. And both characters are growing. And they're growing early. We're not waiting until something tragic happens in episode 10 to just diametrically shift everybody's personality by 180. No, they're going through slow and steady growth. I like it. I appreciate it. And she makes up for her mistakes. I'm sorry. I was just a little bit embarrassed. I was a little bit insecure, maybe. And I said all those things that I didn't mean. I really was looking for you. I like it. A little bit of a suck. Do you do line? I love this subtitle. I'm actually, I think I'm actually going to use it <laughs> for, for this episode's title. Because it's iconic. I think some of those shots are... Maybe not this one. But some of those shots are just photos of the city. With some filter on top. The wristwatch transceiver. And of course she would want to play. Of course she's excited. Watch and transceiver. Some cool toys. Always wanted to have a walkie-talkie. Always did. Never had one. And I actually had friends to use them with, but alas. Someone took it. Little bit, of, little bit of a foreshadowing that, hey, maybe that someone is still around. Maybe that someone still has a watch like this. And he has two. A brand new one that he's gonna share with... Uh, with his vampire GF. And uh, the old one. But the real thing's gonna be really stimulating. Let's get uh, some foreplay going. <laughs> I love how at one moment she acts all like confident and oh I'm the queen of the night and whatnot. And then she's reduced to, to a beetroot red mess <laughs> of an embarrassment. And he speaks truth here. Someone Sometimes it's even lonelier when you're around people. Indeed, that's the case. Being uh, alone is one thing. Being alone in a crowd is a completely other thing. Uh, 150 meters, yeah. A little bit of a talk. A little bit of a play. Top of the evening. And, of course, she gets easily embarrassed. Uh, I don't know what this bit is about. I think it's just meant to look pretty and give us some cool music. There isn't really any bigger purpose to it. I wonder if it's gonna be a running theme. Because the similar thing happened in, C in uh, episode 1, right? When they were also flying around the city to the beat of... I think, actually, the ending song, Yafukashi no Uta. That's why I immediately thought that, hey, it's gonna be the ending now. Right, they're gonna roll the credits and the ending is them just flying around the city. Little did I know what the ending is gonna be. Holy fucking shit, I love it. I love the ending. Yeah, school at night isn't as scary as during the day, because it's different. Because it's alternate reality. Night is as close to alternate reality as we can realistically get. I love this little focus loss. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this effect. Bangs out. And chomp. And this shot. They're not showing the faces, they're not showing the neck, just him struggling. Stealing himself eventually and letting it go. Letting her take him. It does feel lewd because it's both food and copulation. And they're doing it at the night at a school, so who we? What are they gonna do next? Hold hands? Right, Nazina-chan. Nazina-chan! 
and I love how easily embarrassed she gets. <laughs> I love it. I really love Nazana. I wonder what happened to this sad little transceiver's pair. Little did you know, someone's gonna call it. Randomly. What are you doing? Well, what are you doing? You're also out at night. And you're wearing your school uniform. You shouldn't be wearing your school uniform when you're just out and about. I think that's like a rule in Japanese schools, right? To not sully the uniform you're wearing with whatever actions you might be taking that are not sanctioned by school. Something along those lines. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, you, you're also up very early or... I think very early because it looks like sunrise. I wonder why she took the watch. And I wonder where it's gonna go. Could it be first human friend that Koi's gonna get? Uh, did we see this girl in episode 1? I think she might have been one of the girls he talked to behind school building. I'm not sure. And the absolute madness of the ending. I love it. I love every single second, every single frame of it. They're really going balls to the walls with color. And the sheer variety of this ending, right? We're getting some cool, clear art with color. We're getting some, like, drawings on dried cement with some burning out color effect. Uh, we're getting the scene of her just dancing around the city. I love it. I love... I love her tiny little self. We're getting this, her sneaking towards the chair, the armchair. And then we get a complete and utter unrestrained madness of everything at once. Crushing buildings, swimming in the pool, sneaking, some fence, and I think it's Ko carrying her on his back. Water bottle, squirting water, twer upside down twerking, VHS effect, weird poses, and paintball shots, city distraction, twerking. Biting into a lemon, sneaking, overflowing glass of champagne, weird shots of her in a field of flowers, kicking the moon off its stand, and then being in a pool of cum. I don't get this, ED. And I love the fact that I don't get it. It's complete and utter unadulterated madness, and I love every single second of it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That ED really got to me. Uh, I love the opening, I love the ending, and I'm having a hard time choosing which one is better. I really am. As for the episode itself, again, great, some great use of color, some great art, some great animation. Uh, some cool and interesting themes are appearing, some of them out in the open, right? Like the theme of uh, finding friends, for example. Some of them uh, kind of kinda hidden, like uh, calls... Uh, mm inability to make the step, the inability to move, right? He planned the whole thing of someone taking the transceiver and he's going to be able to talk with some stranger, but at the same time, mm, maybe not, oh, maybe oh, maybe it wasn't a great idea, right? Very, very apprehensive from those things. Very apprehensive from taking risks, from stepping outside of, the, of his comfort zone. And meeting... Nanakusa changed him already. 
because he was able to, he genuinely wanted to code the transceiver, but uh, someone else called it before him. Yeah, some some really great, really cool, really interesting themes. And uh, I'm really looking forward to where it's gonna go from here. Because it can go some very interesting uh, places. What places? I don't know. Maybe a little bit in the direction of interpersonal drama. Uh, maybe some psychological drama to a degree. I can very easily see that. Uh... I, I, I don't know what else to say about it, really. It was an experience. Every single episode of this show is an experience in and of itself. In and of itself. Uh, as I mentioned during the uh, discussion segment, I love uh, the vampire girl. I really enjoy Ko's character. I love how they play off of one another. I'm interested in seeing where the inclusion of another character is gonna take us. Adding someone else to the cast. That's gonna be interesting. Could it be that Ko is gonna also have a daytime life? But how's he gonna manage both his nighttime activities and his daytime activities? If that is the case. Is this new character, this new girl going to join him on his nightly escapades? Maybe. I don't know. Who's to say? Why is there a truck driving by my window? Oh, probably some... Uh, yeah, probably they brought some produce to the uh, to the supermarket. They always do that at the uh, latest possible time. Uh, right, what else? Um, I don't know what vibes I'm getting from this new girl. Very hard to get a read on her. Very, very hard. Yeah, she asked Cole, what are you doing here in kind of accusatory? I don't know. Why would she take that transceiver? What was she hoping for? Why did she use it now? Or, or was she also walking the streets in the early morning? Maybe on her way to school she was taking a detour. Maybe she's actually going out of her house earlier to take a detour around the block and pinging the transceiver all the time as she goes to school, hoping to find the owner of the other one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're entering some interesting arcs, we're, we're entering some interesting situations. And of course, I love uh, how well... Uh, how well handled is the marriage of, um, of the comedy in this show, because there is a lot of comedy, and there's very uh, serious and very deep themes that aren't very well, um, very well pronounced yet, but I'm definitely getting the vibes that sometimes there is a little bit of haha -ha comedy, and then we're entering that weird vibe zone. That I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's very... Yeah, I don't know what to name it. I really don't know what to call it. But I love it. That one is for sure. I love the opening. I love the ending. I love everything that's in between. That much, I'm 100% certain of. And uh, did you? Love the opening, the ending, and everything in between. If so, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you didn't, also let me know why. Why did you not like it? What's there to not like? It's an amazing show. It's genuinely great. Uh, so yeah, tell me about it in the comments. What you thought of this episode, of my reaction, of my theories, if I had any. Just don't spoil me anything. Uh, no matter what show I'm watching, I do not appreciate spoilers, so please refrain from doing that. Uh, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified of future releases, not only Yevkashi no Uta, but also Symphogear GX, also uh, Review Starlight, the sequel movie, and uh, also whatever is gonna be replacing Review Starlight in my lineup. Also, Overlord Season 4, Hatarakumawa Mausama Season 2, 
and uh, Ruby Ice Queendom. Those are all the shows I'm watching currently. Uh, so if you want to be notified, uh, subscribe somewhere like here, I think. I think that's where the subscribe button is placed. Um, if you do want to talk spoilers, you can do that on my uh, Discord, right here is the link, and also in the comments. The Discord is otherwise open to like everybody, you can join it, uh, it's not locked behind Patreon or anything, so come hang out with us, uh, see my photos of the school place uh, on the, the old like train station that I took, I guess it's some cool photos. I guess. <laughs> if you want to support the channel, you can do that in two ways. You can do that monetarily on Patreon or Throne, whichever you prefer. On uh, Patreon, for 10 bucks, you get early access to non-seasonals like Review Starlight, whatever is gonna replace Review Starlight, and Symphogear GX. For 5 bucks, you get to vote in a poll for what's gonna replace Review. And for just a dollar, you get a role on the Discord, and you also get a place in the credits. On Throne, you can pitch into whatever thing I want to buy, like a new camera, like a cam link, like some lights and stuff like that, or not. If you just don't want to spend money, period, you can still help the channel by sharing the content, sharing my videos, spreading the word about my channel, because the word of mouth really does matter a lot. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, Patreon, Discord, Throne. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it from me for today. Now excuse me as I'm going to watch the opening and the ending yet again. And uh, that's gonna be it for me for today. So as always, you guys do all the good stuff and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's the credits that I mentioned. You can be here or you can start your own list with a different monetary tier.